Glad to have you join us again. And let's get talking now. The first talking segment of the show. Let's tell you that um, businesses in Nigeria are in for a tough time as macroeconomic headwinds, such as inflation and foreign exchange volatility, amongst others, have continued to stifle the growth prospects of businesses, either large or small. Against this backdrop, the rising cost of living in Nigeria is one factor affecting the quality of life its citizens as the cost of living in the country has been steadily increasing, marked by a significant rise in the price of food and services in recent years. Amid these challenges faced by businesses and citizens, the economic reforms made by the Tinubu-led administration has not made any significant impact on the economy, but has rather made life more difficult for both masses and businesses owners in the country to survive. Joining me now live virtually to do more to discuss more on this, I'm now being joined by the former chairman of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, Lagos Chapter, Mr. Boladi Agbola, who joins me virtually uh, live from Lekki, Lagos. Good morning, sir. It's a pleasure having you join me on the program. Mr. Bola, if you can hear me, uh, I'd like to get your view. What is your assessment of the impact of economic reform of this current administration on business and household with the price of dollar exchanging for close to 2,000 Naira? It's um, fortunate. That's the reality. Um, but um, the, it is not uh, unexpected when you have to adjust your exchange rate and the um, costs of everything have to go up so it's uh, i think it's about one thousand one hundred dollar naira to a dollar yes and of course we have to do the twin program of i mean policy of um, uh, removal of subsidy on petrol and of course the other aspect of the flotation of the naira so we are actually uh, we have two policies in one that even if ah, that's what we always get when we um, get this conversation on a tech platform. Uh, Mr. Bola de Abola is trying to make us understand what is wrong, trying to get the loopholes. Are you back now, sir? You, are you are you not hearing me? I can hear you now. You can go ahead with your submission. So I said when you have those two policies simultaneously, you have the challenge of uh, inflation spiraling. And of course, um, yes, renewed hope. Then you ask when prices are going up, are hopes being renewed? Mm. But the reality is just that um, it is not... Uh, uh, it is not always uh, unexpected when you adjust exchange rate that prices will go up. First of all, cost of importing goods goes up, and then predatory prices has gone up. Cost of doing businesses has gone up. So for businesses, they have to it leads to serious working capital problem because if you need uh, uh, working capital. Now that exchange rate is almost, uh, I mean, it's uh, in multiples of what it used to be. Yes. Then the working capital has to go up. So prices have to go up. And then when working capital goes up, if you cannot get it, then you have to produce less. Mm. And when you produce less, it's a problem for the economy. So we are going to have shrinkage in output. We are going to have uh, purchasing power of household seriously eroded too. So it's a big problem. And that's why inflation is almost going to about 30 percent now but the truth of it is that some of these policy issues will have been taken long time ago several years ago and when you delay it and you are funding your budget with borrowed funds there's a limit to how far you can go so you have to uh, in, in, in continue to borrow it, to fund the potential of petroleum products or to even subsidize the exchange rate. So the truth is now is that we have to, everybody have to adjust. Uh, household businesses have to adjust. 
and uh, it has serious implications for mystery because when inflation is rising and uh, uh, I mean of course it's uh, impact on people's uh, uh, cost of living and um, well the hope is that the uh, exchange rate will stabilize but we don't know how soon and uh, what happened is that we also have a big problem because our revenue has been dwindling. We've had oil production below $1 million uh, barrels per day, but um, because of insecurities, because of uh, uh, outright stealing of crude and all the rest. And so the real hope lies in the fact that we need to get our oil production back. Uh, we are strictly just on... 1.3 million barrels per day. Hmm. That was the volume we were producing in 1971. Hmm. That is what we are producing today. Hmm. And our populations are multiplied in, in multiples. Hmm. Of course, even between 1999 and date, we have about 100 million people that have been added to our population. Yes. And still our oil production is still the same. So which means the economy has to look at other areas for growth. We have to look at agriculture. We have to look at manufacturing. Of course, we also have the challenges with manufacturing because we put some items not eligible for foreign exchange. So now that we have removed those things, it is also going to cause its own volatility. So we have trying to collapse all the problem together, and that will have a lot of uh, impact in going forward because those items that were not eligible for foreign exchange in the official market that is supposed to be driving the parallel market they are also now free to be go to the uh, uh to the official market the issue is do we have supply of uh, foreign exchange to meet that only no because of the fact that our crude oil production has been going on down for a long time and that is significant because 90 percent of our foreign exchange is from sale of crude oil so if that is hampered definitely our capacity to get foreign exchange will be ample. So we are now in a tight situation. So what can bail us out is if we can restore crude oil production. Of course, the impact of all this is that demand for even imported goods are likely to go down because many of those, especially for items that are not, uh, demand for them are not elastic. All right. So you find out that it's only, I mean, it's only items that we have inelastic demand that people will buy at any cost. But the elastic demand item, like food and all the rest, people will have to buy less. I mean, you see the price of a loaf of bread is over 1,000 naira. So, so you find out that demand will go down. So the key thing is that we have to rebuild the economy. And uh, we have to also have this policy of adjusting to economic realities. Because the price of crude oil has been going on since 2014. Mm. And unfortunately, we have not been adjusting our exchange rate to bear that into reality. Rather than doing that, we were borrowing. Rather than doing that, we were doing all sorts of, uh, uh, I mean, believing that things will improve. Of course, COVID came into to Washington it for one year. There was no output. So we have to really start on a new hope, so to say, that things will get better. And it has happened before. In 1993, 1995, we had dual exchange rate. When it was collapsed in 1995, the inflation went haywire as high as 70%. And of course, two years later, the inflation moderated. So to me, the expectation is that this inflation will be with us for some time to come. And we are still going to have another headwind, which is the wage adjustment. By the time the wage adjustment kick in too, it's still going to so we are still we are still not going to see the end of the inflation spiral. It's still going to go further up. But the truth of it is that if we start doing things normally the way it should be done, then I believe that the economy will pick up and then we'll be able to have sustainable growth. What we are now realizing is that it takes a lot for an economy to have sustainable growth. Yes. And uh, Mr. that Mr. has, to, Bella, work me to, and has to be intentionally worked for. Yes.